welcome to another episode of Girls with Dogs. This is Kimberly from Keep the Toe Wagging, and I'm here with my dear friend Kathy of Groovy Golden Doodles, and we are Girls with Dogs, and this is take two, because take one didn't work. And I'm so upset because, see, take two people won't be able to hear the cannon. I know. I can, I can go and edit that part out and just put it in here so people no, can. As long as you can just on air say that you heard the cannon. And yeah, I'm not I heard the cannon. In fact, I will. I will because I have the video and that part is fine. And I, you guys have got to hear this cannon. She's been it's telling me about the cannon for over a year now. Use the Jess Greens and the Bailey's blend while he was with us. So is that the cannon? Yes. Oh my God. That sounds yeah. like someone is on your porch banging on your door <laughs> with a hammer. Huh? Did you see me jump? I, you can't help it because it's not. Thank you, God. Oh it's my so gosh. I was expecting like this to end and be like, well, you might've heard it, but I didn't hear it. But that sounds like, like your neighbor next door is doing like, or someone in your house is doing remodeling. And- yeah. It's not that I doubt it that there is a cannon. I just didn't, I didn't know what it would sound like because usually like when our dogs don't like a noise, I always think that they hear it a lot more than we do mm -hmm. because they have more sensitive ears. Um, but it sounded like someone was on her porch, either banging on her door or just in her yard setting doing something or there was construction go it was loud mm -hmm. it was loud it was not something at a distance it, it was right there no it's it's horrible hello what happened i have no idea you froze and that was that yeah you froze like this i figured i did i figure i froze too you know we lost visual guys i'm sorry some our internet is not happy I think it's time. It's time for us to to leave Zoom and find something else because I I blame Zoom. Zoom. So, Zoom. tell me, you were telling me about you were talking about pet insurance. My rant, my rant. Yes. So what I was saying is that I am hotter than a tick on the back of a cow. <laughs> I know that was a visual, right? Yeah. Um, no. So I was looking at my bank statement and I noticed that. My the Jax's insurance has really it jumped, and I'm sure that they're going to tell me that they sent me something, and they probably did. However, I think maybe on the envelope it should say something like premium increase, you know, to make you want to open it up and read it. But in any event, I am really perturbed. I was warned um, the last several months with them because. This is that season for Jax with his ears. Mm -hmm. October, I could have paid um, a car payment with what I put out because for whatever reason, and they said, wow, this is bizarre. He had three different types of bacteria oh. in one ear. I know. So it was like crazy when I was gone, we even had to take him um, and he was miserable. He's on the mend. He's doing much, much better now. But my gosh, um, every time I went, like I said, it was, it was a lot of money. And I wasn't really focused or thinking a lot about it because I was going to submit the claims and the invoices and then, you know, all would be right with the world. Now, all of a sudden, this is not considered wellness. And so at this point, God forbid there was an accident or some type of emergency surgical need. Pretty much the only thing they're doing for me is reimbursing me for heart guard and neck guard. And because that's pretty much everything comes back, not covered, not covered, not covered. Mm -hmm. So I had a conversation with the guy and we talked about it and I wasn't really satisfied. So now I'm insurance shopping again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rodrigo or actually Zoe's insurance skyrocketed um this year and i think it's because because scout had cancer his insurance went up and they increased zoe to the same rate and i was kind of like zoe didn't have cancer <laughs> um but i let it go yeah you get penalized because they're siblings or something 
Yeah, that's what I felt like. And, you know, I was going to call and talk to him about it, but, you know, Scout was still alive and I was just so focused on him that I just let it go. Um, But it is kind of uh, shocking. And it's one of those where all of my dogs are covered. Apollo is the least amount and Zoe is actually more than Rodrigo, but Rodrigo is with a different insurance company. So that could be part of it too. Yeah, well, I, I'm thinking I'm going to have to go ahead and um, and move along, which, you know, just it's it's annoying, mm-hmm. but I need something more than just heart guard and next guard. Yeah, uh, this this is not working for me, as the people say. So yeah. I'm going to need um, some additional um, coverage. Yeah, because I know that this is something that I'm dealing with. And to me, I think ear infections fall under the category of wellness I agree especially if they're recurring I'm okay with that but listen listen Linda listen (laughs) going down the rabbit hole you know learning more and more educating myself I should say on pet insurance I came across a really nifty site and the, the the site itself is not really nifty but um it was giving nifty information (laughs) <laughs> and they were talking about pet industry trends to watch from 2022 to 2025. Mm. And so let me show you how deep I went. Um, first of all, in 2021, CBD oil for dogs kind of peaked, but something happened in 2022 and it took off again. I mean, to like incredible measurements for percentages. Mm. Okay, so I thought that that was very interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at that at 300 percent over the last 10 years. Exactly. Um, I also found out, which is great in terms of putting a plug in for Big Barker Mm -hmm. dog beds, that now beds have become the third category of pet products. You know, it used to be more focused on food, toys, leashes, and things like that. But now beds is number three. Um, Kudos to you. I think you had a lot to do with this. Ha ha. (laughs) Raw food and uh, I was going to say raw food and raw food adjacent people, but no, I can't make that up. But there is an increase in raw feeding it has gone up 53 percent since 2018 yeah it's a 60 66 per, uh, 66 percent of dog owners and 53 percent of cat owners feed their pets raw food this is pretty amazing and it's the searches just, for raw dog food has increased by 110 percent since 2017 it is becoming a growing pet food niche yes i know and so I thought, see, I thought it was pretty interesting the way that they have, um, you know, broken this up. So of course, you know, I was all into the pet insurance space, trying mm-hmm. to figure out what in the world is going on. But it also, when I looked at treats and things of that nature, have you ever heard of the bear and the rat frozen? Yes. Milk? Yeah, I have. Really? Mm-hmm. I saw them. I, I first discovered them at Super Zoo one year. So my question is, do you make your own frozen yogurt for your dogs? Yes, I do. Okay. I don't know why I felt that I needed to ask you that, like, <laughs> but I felt I needed to ask you. I, it's, uh, but it's those type of things that I always like. I like them as, you know, cool treats sometimes for your dogs, um, you know, and, but not something that I would buy on a regular basis. But over the years, especially um, over the past couple of years, I've embraced doing as much on my own as possible so that I can spend my money elsewhere. Uh, and yogurt, once I realize how easy it is to make yogurt, I thought it was something hard to do. It's so easy to do that I made a, a ton of batches of yogurt and just put them in the freezer and thaw them out, um, mix fruit in them or other fun ingredients and give them to the dogs that doesn't work in my house because remember we once talked about the different levels of lactose 
mm-hmm. that each individual dog's gut can handle. Yep. Yeah, yogurt is not um is not our friend. Yeah. We love it going down. Yeah. And it's it's it not up. something that I could do heavily. It's you know that's one thing that I learned too. Um, it I it's kind of fattening if you don't adjust if you're feeding it regularly and don't adjust your dog's diet accordingly. Mm-hmm. You know. No, I like I said for whatever reason I can do cheese. I can do cottage cheese, and um, you know on a cool day they're okay with a little cottage cheese in one of those puppuccino cups. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, um, the dairy whip cream that they use at Starbucks, Mm -hmm. that doesn't bother them. Yeah, I think it's- Interesting enough, there's a whole lot of crap in it. Yeah. But they don't get it as much. And I stopped doing it at home because Jax is at work with me so much. So, um, and they've learned to just, you know, eat their fruit naked. But but yeah, so the yogurt- because there was another type of a real popular type of of frozen ice cream, um, something paws. Remember? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember? Yes, you do. Don't say anything. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> it up. Something paws, but anyway, that just like saturated the market, and I was one of oh those- frosty paws. There we go. I was running one of those people that were going around buying it. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember maybe, those. Trust me when I say one word that will just give you all the visual you need. Explosion. <laughs> and I was, um, so I'm interested when we get off the phone to looking at this lemonade pet insurance. What pet insurance? Lemonade. Uh, oh yeah, I have heard of lemonade. I'm I'm really interested. It's right now they're claiming and they could be claiming it because it's easier to claim, but mm-hmm. they're claiming that it's America's best rated insurance. But hey, did you know that Chewy has pet insurance? Oh, I did not know that. They're, they, they're calling their insurance from nose to tail medical coverage. Hmm. So those are the two that I'm going to be researching and you are more than welcome the next time we get together to interview me and ask me all the questions because I, I definitely will because I'm curious about that the subject matter expert now why I like the lemonade unless there's going to be something they show that they cover diagnoses procedures medication to include injections and prescription meds accidents and illness hmm. and so I be that's what I need I don't need to pay and just feel all nonchalant should there be an accident you know um yeah i i want to be covered for the majority of the expenses that i pay for yeah so yeah. And, and here's the other question too hmm. so you know what i got in the mail last what? week you'll never guess it was very exciting for me <laughs> what was that i got my medicare card oh i know right now i don't need it but I finally succumbed and told Social Security I, I'm at 100%. Send me my money. And apparently, <laughs> you have to have a Medicare, a Medicare card or a membership when you start collecting Social Security. But mm-hmm. the reason I'm saying this why am I getting a Medicare card? I'm getting a Medicare card because I'm what? I'm a senior, right? Mm-hmm. So, my question is why the hell is pet insurance penalizing senior dogs? versus doing something to help them that's a good question i thought so i mean i think it it would be nice if you know they offered some type of discounts for wellness checks and stuff yes you know to to, as a preventative going forward because yeah i mean rodrigo is with trupanion and i do like trupanion but his deductible is a thousand dollars just to keep his um premiums low um and the other dogs are with embrace and I've been going back and forth if I'm going to switch Rodrigo over to Embrace. I haven't. He doesn't have a whole lot of claims with Trupanion, but I worry that if I switch him to Embrace at, you know, almost 13 years old, it, the um, the premiums would be like outrageous. Well, be careful because one insurance company wouldn't take Harley 
because oh. of it. Oh, interesting. Exactly. And the insurance company that Jax is with, I had Harley with um, as a puppy. So here we go. True confession. But um, wait, I lost you. True confessions. What? True confessions. Yeah, I tried to mute so I could cough. Oh, but, okay. So, true confessions. And I don't know what number this is for me. <laughs> I, I used to have tick marks. By 742. Mind. There we go. Um, <laughs> I got the pet insurance when I got Harley because it was my first dog and I didn't know any better. And mm-hmm. then by like year two or three, I thought, why the hell am I paying this premium? So I stopped it. Okay. Yes. Bad pet parent, but I know I'm not alone. Yeah. And so then when I decided that I wanted to bring him back on, they told me that trying to bring him on at 10, when I already had him on and I removed him that they were denying to cover him. Oh, wow. I know. So I want you to be very cautious and careful if you decide to switch. Yeah. You know, you might want to get him on board and have an overlap of coverage. Yeah. Just to see how it's going. And then go ahead and get him um, dropped from the other one. So Lemonade launched this insurance coverage in 2020. Um because they kept seeing this annual growth rate Mm -hmm. in the the pet insurance industry. So I want to check it out and I'll um, let you know. All right. All right. That'll be interesting. I I think so. I think so. I mean, well, that's just it. It's like, you know, when it comes to, you know, when the economy starts, you know, struggling, when people start struggling, they start looking at a lot of these things of, do I really need this? You know, and one of the things that goes out of the door is regular vet visits and pet insurance. Those, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like if my dog seems healthy and seems fine, I'm not going to, I'm going to cut out the wellness checks because they can be expensive, especially if you have a senior dog or have multiple dogs. And now that I never did. And I've been blessed beyond measure because even though Harley is a senior dog, Harley has never cost me, knock on wood, praise God, he has never cost me an abundance of money for any health reasons. Like I said, his weight continued to flutter between 50 and 51 pounds for 12 years. It's just recently now that he is losing muscle mass. So he's losing like a half a pound or um, every two or three months. Because I think now he's like at 48 pounds. But um, his health has really, Harley's going to be 14 and has never had his teeth cleaned. Now that oh, wow. Wow. Um, but he's never, it's never been something that the vet said, we need to go ahead and clean his teeth. Like I said, I had his eyes examined because I thought that's why he was hopping over the last step. Yeah, but I remember. That his optic nerves were excellent. And that's, that was Dr. Johnson's word of choice. So I, I'm really grateful to him for that, that I didn't have any extreme medical problems. And that's why I just never, ever thought to, before he was older, to put him back into some kind of a um, insurance plan. But I've always kept up with the wellness and vaccinations and things of that nature. That's good. That's really good. I need to take my dogs in for wellness checks. I'm just not ready to do it at the moment. I'm still, I know it's not smart. But, um, you know, we're still dealing with the whole thing with Scout. And my thought is I just can't deal with any bad news. And even though the dogs are healthy and stuff, I just, I just don't want to hear it. And so I'm going to schedule them um, wellness appointments in January and just take them all in one at a time. I don't know how Apollo would do because Apollo, he's never had blood work done. And so I'm worried about how how that's going to go but you know they're professionals and they know how to deal with various dogs and so I'm going to just talk to them and leave it up to them about what they want to do with him but definitely I want to definitely get Rodrigo and Zoe in Zoe's nine years old now I saw I saw I said okay so she put a blog post up I mean a Facebook post up because I shamed her and asked her what she did for her dogs for their birthday yeah that was all I got I mean, I do, I do um, 
annual post of my dog's birthdays, but that's pretty much all I did. Oh, and I made her, you know, I made, well, everyone got a special meal, but um, that's, that's as far as it goes for me. That's as far as my energy level goes oh, when it comes to about special meals, man, do you know what smells divine? Hmm. I know that's just such a wide question. <laughs> So this week, the boys are eating Bailey's mm -hmm. from um, Green Juju. Uh -huh. Oh my God, that stuff smells so good. <laughs> now I have to go get some because I don't, I don't remember what it smells like. Bailey's blend. It is, it smells delicious. <laughs> I mean, I haven't tasted it. I'm not going to say I'm going to go that far, <laughs> but it really, really smells good. And I'm like, oh man, this is great. And they love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's good. So that's we're good. on this thing where we do one week of um, either Bailey's, the blonde or the green juju, and then um, a week of the goat milk. I'm thinking about getting some little containers and splitting them up, Uh huh. you know, but I think I'm like putting way too much into this. Like <laughs> so um, it was just a pass, a, fa a passing fancy as if you will. I know I it's, it's it. funny because I, I still, you know, I alternate with um, Jess Green's and Bailey's blends, but not, not that often. Um, I sort of like buy, I'll buy a case of it through our local co-op. And when I run out, I run out, but I also, try and make my own blends. And I've been looking more into just various vegetables and recently stopped adding spinach to my blends. Actually, it's not recent. I actually stopped adding spinach a while ago because I don't like the way it smells. Um, and this happened because I was fermenting vegetables and ooh, when you ferment spinach, oh, it's awful. It just, it, the whole thing smells sour. And so I just stopped adding spinach, but it turns out that out of all the vegetables, spinach is one of those vegetables that is highly um, sprayed with chemicals. So it's very toxic. And a lot of people are like, people shouldn't eat spinach. Dogs shouldn't eat spinach. No one should be eating spinach. And I kind of felt like, oh, okay, well, good. I, I have a reason now for not um, adding spinach to my blends beyond the fact that I don't like the way it smells. So my sister was anemic growing up. Mm-hmm. So every week we all had to endure spinach and liver. Those oh. things are just never, ever going to be in my <laughs> kitchen. Um, I think if that's what you want, this is why they have restaurants. I'm yes. serious. Yeah. You know, when um, a delicacy in Charleston um, is okra. Oh, all yes. People will boil it and broil it and fry it and stew it. Um, I love fried okra. And um, I used to always make everybody laugh because whenever we would come to Charleston to visit family, I'd ask everybody to please make okra because I said, that's just something that's not going to happen in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are some things that just taste better when it comes from the source of where the memory lies. Yeah, I agree. And so... Um, I didn't even attempt to try because I knew it was just going to like give me reflux gagging. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what, what fun is in that? So, yeah, so I understand the spinach. It can, it probably does smell, but that was just not something that I wanted to um, eat after having to eat it. Do you recall in your childhood things that your mother did then she wouldn't change. Like for instance, my mother, you would have thought that Mr. Hellman's was her daddy <laughs> because I went to visit my friend around the corner, Beverly, and we had lunch and my sandwich was divine because Beverly's mother used Miracle Whip. Oh, yeah. So when we were in the grocery store and I saw it and I wanted it so bad and my mother was like, no, we use Hellman's. <laughs> and so it was things like Hellman's. Oh, here's another one. Jergens lotion. Mm -hmm. 
I remember somebody else had some different kind of lotion and I thought it was great and I wanted a bottle. We used Jerkins. And I was like, who are these people that you are just so loyal to? So um, that's the carryover for me. So there are certain things that I just don't buy. Now I will buy it, but I'm not going to use it. So in my refrigerator is a small jar of Hellman's and a large jar of Miracle Whip. <laughs> I mine was um, what's it called? Like you know the store brand versus the you know the popular brand of things. Oh, so, you mean the generic version? Yeah. So it's like you know you get P- Kellogg's Pop Tarts, or you can get the Toastios, or you know Toasties, or something like that. Um, and so, and my mom was, it wasn't so much that my mom was just very big on buying what was on sale. And if the sale was really good, she'd buy tons of it. And she had one child, me, and I'm just, some of the stuff I was just like, I didn't ask for this. I don't want it. And, but it's like, no, this is what you're going to eat until it's gone type of situation. So with my, and my mom, she was a good cook with traditional things, but whenever she tried something new, it was horrible. And my mom didn't take, I don't like this very well. And so because of her, I had applesauce for the first time a few years ago when my mother-in-law made it. And I was just like, this is what homemade applesauce is supposed to taste like. She, cause she came and she would come and pick apples from our trees and she would take them home and make applesauce and bring it back. And it's delicious. My mother once made applesauce and it was the most disgusting, horrific, it smelled horrible. It tasted horrible. Everything about it was disgusting. How can you mess up applesauce? Oh, well she did. And she, she put her foot into it. It's like, she was trying to make a point. Because I am 51 years old and I still remember the smell and the taste of that god awful applesauce. Um, but my mom, I don't know, she's she wasn't really devoted to any type of brands, she was just mostly, um, uh, very much into like remember, like the double coupon days where you got your oh, coupons. God. Then you yeah. got the double coupons and then you got some type of stamps things that you collected. And um, oh, I'll take one. I'll get, listen, <laughs> I was destined, I'm destined to live a long life. Thank you, God. The reason I say that is because I grew up on this product that I know was just colored Crisco. Um, <laughs> listen, listen, do you remember parquet margarine? Yes. Oh, and you remember how how that yellow color didn't look natural or yes. normal? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I remember saying to my mother, can we have butter? You'd have thought I cussed her. <laughs> I mean, she, Well, she, I think, whoa, wait. One brand that my mom was devoted to, and I am still devoted to that brand today and have a hard time with anything other than it, is Tillamook and it's a cheese out of Oregon. So Tillamook cheese and um, we would have Tillamook cheddar cheese. And I loved it so much that where my mom would, and you would, I was such a weird child. My mom would shred the cheese and just put it on a plate and give it to me as a snack. And I'd be happy as pie. (laughs) And I still love that today. I'll sit there and eat shredded cheddar cheese. It's just, but that's the only thing. Tell them up. Now, I do make applesauce for the boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like, should make like, applesauce. Yeah, I do make applesauce for the dogs. Um, all of our apples went to waste this year. We got we had a good crop of apples, but the, with the way the spring was and everything, they got bugs really fast. And so I did get some, and I actually made a um a fiber supplement with them. I dehydrated them. And then when they were dry, I blend, blend them up into a powder where, and now I just put a scoop into their meals as fiber. Now here's um, a question that I wanted to ask you Hmm. in the past, when I've made my applesauce for them, I've never put anything in it. Okay. So don't Hmm. ask me why Billy has got me thinking about all this creative crap, but he has. (laughs) And so um, 
And if y'all haven't heard Billy, we did. I did meet Billy. So you might want to look at that episode. Um, that was my little plug. But <laughs> what, when you use cinnamon with the dogs, do you use a particular cinnamon? I mean, I do. I only use, um, it's, I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's Ceylon, Ceylon, C, it's C-E-Y-L-O-N. C-E-Y-L-O-N. Cinnamon. C-E-Y-L-O-N. Uh-huh. Okay. I don't know how you pronounce it. Is this a human product or a dog product? It's a human product and it's expensive. So it's not at, um, my regular um no, it's a called? whole food. it's a whole food diet. exactly I have to go there it used to be at my grocery store because we used to have a, a section that had herbs and you can you know scoop out your own herbs into a bag and and buy them but when the pandemic hit they got rid of all of that self-serve food stuff and then um they've slowly been bringing things back but they never brought back that cinnamon so I have to drive to a fancy store to get it Okay, so listen, I'm going to do this for you. You ready? Are you listening? Mm-hmm. Salon. Okay, salon. Wow, that was easy. I was just actually looking up the um, pronunciation. Thank you for doing that, salon. I am here for you, babe. Dude, I, I was pronouncing it wrong for years. And I wish I knew, you know, because since we're talking about it, I wish I knew why it was better um, I think it's because, you know, it's not as processed as like the, the cinnamon that's in the spice section of the grocery store is, well, it doesn't I, have the I, same I wanted benefits. To, to talk, I wanted to, you know, once I found out that there were benefits for dogs, um, you know, eating cinnamon, mm-hmm. I thought, Hey, I could just go ahead and do this as opposed to giving them the cold apple chunks you know then I could kind of make like chunky cinnamon applesauce Mm -hmm. um so yeah so I was like huh let me ask you if you do that so I just I actually add it to my golden paste because I found that with one of my dogs when Sydney was alive when she would have golden paste added to her food her coat would smell and it doesn't happen with my dogs now but it did with her and someone suggested ask, uh, adding, C- what is it? Salon? Salon cinnamon to it. And I did, and it took the smell away. So I've been doing it ever since. I know that there are other benefits to cinnamon. And I actually think I have a blog post about this on my website, but, um, but yeah, I like that. I would, if I did, um, what's it called? applesauce I would definitely have like a sprinkle of the salon cinnamon but I'm trying to think of other stuff that I would put in there but I can't really (laughs) think of anything else I would put in applesauce for my dogs this is very interesting because um where did it go (laughs) actually oh well now this is so stupid of me so we're Mm -hmm. talking and I am just plugging things in Mm -hmm. about cinnamon you know benefits that type Mm -hmm. of stuff and then I get all excited because I see a link benefits of salon cinnamon for dogs and I was about to tell you I found something but damn it it's your blog post (laughs) yay (laughs) and I did write something but I'm looking up here it's like it's a strong antibacterial strong antifungal antiviral antioxidants helps reduce blood pressure lowers cholesterol improves digestion balances blood sugar levels, um, helps to build strong bones, boost the memory. Um, it's anti-inflammatory and it has manganese fiber, iron, and calcium. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, That's a load of benefits. Okay. So then I'm going to try it, but yeah, I, I like, um, I like to, to do that, to just take the apple First of all, it's easier for me in the evening to just give them a couple of scoops, you know, mm-hmm. and a wafer cook cookie. Um, because who doesn't want a wafer cookie with their applesauce? But um, it's just, it's just, and it goes further than just chopping up the apple. Yeah. So I'll oh, check it out. The, the, the supermarket version. So that's the cassius cinnamon. Um, the reason why we shouldn't be giving that to our dogs is actually it can be um, 
it's heavy and strong and it can be toxic to their liver. So we definitely yeah. don't want to add that to their diet. We want to go with the uh, salon. I'm looking at um I'm looking at the one in Whole Foods by Simply Organic. Now this is gonna crack you up. I mm. think this is really downstairs in my camp in my cabinet, but there's like simply organic is probably in 14 font and then in eight font underneath it it says salon cinnamon. <laughs> so I'm gonna go check my jar when I go downstairs. But I think I'm going to do that. And I think you should start doing that too, especially since you have so many apples. I know, exactly. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that to go and check that out. Um, I wish I could get my dogs to eat carrots, but they don't like it. They'd like it if it's with something else. Yeah. Same I'm just my- all about cooking stuff cooking it down, making it soft. Yeah. <clears throat> my um, my dogs most- aren't really into whole vegetables. They, I tried it out because I was testing out rotational mono feeding. And so I uh-huh. filled their bowl with vegetables a few times and they kind of looked at their bowls and just turned and looked at me like what's happening. And um, I know that, you know, if I were to tell the group, my dogs don't seem to be into these vegetables. Um, they would be like, just keep offering them. And so I did. Um, and yeah, they, I mean, they ate them, but they just weren't enthusiastic about it. And granted, I, I, I want my dog's life to be enjoyable. And if they have to sit and eat a food that they, that really, they're not getting a whole lot out of, I mean, shouldn't it be fun for them? And so when I do vegetables, I just prefer to have them pureed or like with green beans, they'll eat those whole all day long. I don't know what it is about green beans. I have no idea. Because those are always a hit. I have no idea. And you know, it was funny the other day, Lee said, um, he said, I had some green beans with my dinner, Kathy. He said, they were delicious. And I thought, oh, shit. (laughs) And the first thing I had to think about was, did you do anything to the green beans? Mm -hmm. And I was quickly able to exhale and smile and say oh no they were just Libby's and they were just you know steamed from you know (laughs) and he said they were really good and I thought phew I didn't bother to say that they were the dogs (laughs) and that's a big turn off remember the um the pumpkin incident yes yes yeah when he thought it was sweet potatoes and he said I don't know what you did with these sweet potatoes but they're nasty yeah. <laughs> it's a canned pumpkin for dogs, boo boo. I mean, <laughs> Libby's canned pumpkin, but it was just pumpkin. And he, poor thing, he had heated it with his food and he put butter on it. <laughs> it was so sad. It was <laughs> but um, now, no. now, I'm not going to try to tell you how to, you know, feed your dogs, but if your dogs were to ask my dogs, if they would like their applesauce with the skin, my dogs would tell your dogs no. That's where a lot of the fiber is. Yeah, but it doesn't like cook down well. Yeah, that's what I, I've always wondered about it. And and to be perfectly honest, I'm not feeding applesauce for its nutritional benefits. I mean, yes, there's part of it, but it's a treat. And it's like, an, again, I want my dogs to enjoy their treat. No, unless you plan on putting it in a blender like to puree it. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard Harley and Jack's talking and they both see <laughs> small little chunks that are in there. It gives them something, you know, when they lap up and then they got a chunk on their tongue. It's like, mm-hmm. a, it's like an Easter egg surprise. <laughs> so, but yeah, I give them the skin when they're eating a, just a raw apple, but um, I don't use the skin when I'm doing the applesauce yeah yeah so that's it I'll have to give that a try next year Mm -hmm. when we get our apples I just I didn't I hate the idea of them just going because I mean like literally we have buckets of apples on the ground right now just rotting into the soil I mean it'll enrich the soil for for next year's crop which is good but it's just such a way to live near you and we have a honey crisp apple tree too really Mm mm-hmm Yep. 
And people, I mean, I, I used to like put stuff out on social media to say, Hey, if anybody needs apples, um, cause one friend, she was like, Hey, can I get some of your apples? And I was like, yeah, I'll go pick a bucket. And she never showed up. And so those apples went bad. And so I was just like, and I texted her, it's like, Hey, you, you going to come get these apples. She's like, Oh, I got other ones. And I was just like, okay, I ain't never giving you apples from my tree again. <laughs> cause yeah, it's like, am, um, well, I'm excited because I asked Santa Claus for, um, a lemon and a lime and a um, orange citrus tree. Nice for the backyard. And so I'm excited, and I'm putting them in pots, the big, huge pots. Mm-hmm. I hope Stan understands that I like want the tree and the pot. <laughs> I may need to go back and edit my list. <laughs> there may be a little bit of confusion there, <laughs> but that's that's what I'm looking for. Hey guys, it's Kimberly from Keep the Tail Wagging. Thank you so much for listening to Girls with Dogs. We so appreciate all of you guys who take time out of your day to listen to our podcast and listen to us banter about our dogs. But this is a mini break so that I can talk to you guys about this week's sponsor, Lifeline Pet Products. I've been telling you about their fish oil for several weeks now. I love them. It's the only fish oil I use with my dogs. I still add fish to their diet, but in my research and in my experience with my dogs, I found that they get more omega-3 fatty acids in a spoonful of fish oil than they would like in a can of, of sardines. So I really think that fish oil is an important part of our dog's diet. But that's not the only thing that Lifeline produces. They also have this amazing kelp. And I add this to the diet as well. A lot of people understand that kelp is a great source of iodine, which supports thyroid health. What people may not understand is that kelp is really good for dogs with allergies because not only does it support skin and coat health, but it's a natural anti-inflammatory. So I give this to my dog, Rodrigo, in the spring and in the fall. I mean, he gets a little bit all year long, but the spring and fall is when his environmental allergies really flare up. And this is going to give him the support that he needs. So if you are looking for something to add to the mix, something that's a whole food, healthy supplement, something that's organic and that you can trust, check out Lifeline Pet Products, their organic kelp, and definitely pick up some of their fish oil too. So back to the episode. Thanks for watching guys. So what else is going on with you and your crew? Well, I've been buying lottery tickets because the lottery is so high and I have decided that I want to win the lottery because I am going to buy a property and build a house for, you know, us and the dogs, but also build a shop where it's just going to be all for raw feeding. It's going to have a bigger freezers and um, stainless steel tables and all kinds of stuff. So I can just go into my shop and um, make dog food and have shelves and pantries for their supplements and everything. I just got that in my head one night. Um, and actually it was Monday night, Johan and I, I took him to dinner for his birthday because he is a Halloween baby as well. And, um, and we were talking about like what we would do. Like if you could get, you had a few million dollars, what would you do? Um, that would just make you happy. And that was one of the things that would make me happy. And so I went after dinner, I went and bought some lottery tickets. We stood there for a very long time buying lottery tickets because I didn't know how to work the machine. And Johan was very patient with me as I was trying to figure out this machine. Birthday, he had to be patient with you. I know it was, it was so horrible, but he, I mean, it was, and I just looked at him and I was just like, I am so sorry. He was just like, I'm just watching you figure this out. This is just off. I, and I was just like, I'm glad there isn't a line. He's like, I know <laughs> that would have been embarrassing. Cause it was, I was there for way too long trying to figure out how to buy lottery tickets, but I got them. And so maybe next week when we record, um, uh, I'll be able to tell you that I won you know, $300 million in the lottery and we're somehow, breaking, just breaking ground. Envision, somehow I just don't envision that <laughs> you're going to wait until the following week. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll be, you know, it's so funny because we were talking about like, what would you do? And, you know, who would you tell? And I'm, you know, and I've, I'm always, you know, going back to, you know, our, our mothers, I've always had the belief that you don't tell anybody like if you win the lottery you just disappear because that's what my mom would always say like if we ever win the lottery we just vanishing 
because everybody will be on our porch with their hand out wanting something. And so I was just, so he was like, you know, what would you do? And I was like, I would just send a text to my boss that said, I won the lottery. I ain't coming back. And then I'd just be gone, a ghost. But, um, but yes, I will call you and tell you, hey, Kathy, I won $300 million. I'm rich. Did you whisper my name? Like yes. nobody else was going to hear that? Yes. Yes, I did. Oh, God. Yes, I did. Because that's how I would say it. I would whisper it. You sounded like flowers in the attic. <laughs> hey, Kathy. And I was like, what's wrong with her? But... <laughs> oh, my God. Um, otherwise we're just, you know, I'm taking this dog food nutrition course. I'm almost finished with it. It's very fascinating. And I'm learning a lot about, um, you know, uh, why our dogs need what they need. And, and one thing that I learned that piped out for me, and I was, I did not know this was that senior dogs need more protein in their diet, um, as they get older and, So, and that made sense, like with what you feed your dogs, which is a higher protein diet. And so I thought, yeah. And I thought that that was really interesting. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, I, I like learning new things. Also, I create, we are not on camera, but I will be sure to put a link to a video to show people. But I, um, I did a review of these pet platters. They're the mine pet platters. And I've been seeing people using these platters um, and, you know, similar to licky mats, but these are supposed to be where licky mats are more for a treat or, you know, something to occupy your dog's time. And, you know, it's different than like a rawhide chew or another two. They just have this frozen type of licky mat or it doesn't have to be frozen. But I, um, then I started seeing people talk about the mine pet platters and I thought it was interesting. And I, you know, someone contacted me and said, Hey, have you heard about these? You should really check them out. And so I went to the website. I read what was on the website was, you know, I do believe that, you know, um, traditional dog bowls aren't the, aren't right for every dog. And, um, I discovered that with my dogs, when Sydney was diagnosed with cancer, she really was turned off of her food. And I was terrified that she would stop eating And, um, that would hasten her health issue, um, or, you know, speed up the cancer. And so I called a friend in a panic, like she won't eat. And my friend was like, don't feed her from a bowl, feed her from a plate and spread the food out so she can look at it and see it. And it's not overwhelming when it comes to the smell. And I did that and she, she cleaned her bowl. So I started doing that for everyone. I swapped out their stainless steel bowls for pasta dishes that are plates um, they're flat, but they have a, a, a lip on the edge. So nothing's going to fall off like with a plate. And I've been feeding in that way for years. So the website talks about this and I agree with a lot of the things that the website had to say. Um, so I, I bought four pet platters. This was about a year ago and I just never got around to using them, but mm-hmm. I've been seeing more and more people promoting them, talking about them. So I decided I was going to just donate them. Cause I was like, I'm not going to use these, but I was like, no, let's give them a shot. So I gave them a shot, um, used them a couple times and it just, they were messy. My dogs seemed um, like a little stressed out as far as eating from them. And maybe it's because it was something new. It just wasn't something that they were into. And I was just sort of like, yeah, this doesn't work for my dogs. Um, But I still like the idea of it. And I was talking to Johan about it last week. And, um, we were like, you know, and Johan was understanding where I was coming from as far as making it a little easier for the dogs to choose what they wanted to eat, to separate the food out a little bit. And he was like, what about a lunch tray? So with, you know, dividers. And he was like, remember those? And I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. So we both with our phones are looking online and I found these circular lunch trays with dividers on Amazon and you can get four of them for $20. So I ordered that and then I ordered the rubber feet that you would normally put at the bottom of furniture. And I put small ones on the bottom of these dishes so that they don't slide around on the floor and fed the dogs from those. And it was a hit. The dogs loved it. It was easy to do, no problems. And it was basically each dish with the rubber feet is about eight bucks each when you get everything off of Amazon. Let's go on Shark Tank. 
I know. Well, that's just it is that I was telling Johan, man, can you imagine? Cause these mine pet platters are, well, for a dog of, you know, my size, cause we, I got the large ones, they're 40 bucks a piece. I was like, why can't you have someone punch out a tray and put feet on it as part of like the built-in of the tray? You could probably do that for, you know, less than $5 a tray and then sell them for, you know, $15. I mean, right. and, it's, and it's just like, it's a really cool idea. And I think that, you know, I, I think the mind pet platters are, are kind of cool. I think that they work best for flat face dogs because they have a hard time getting into the corners of bowls. Um, and I think they're good for puppies. You know, um, again, I gave, I donated three of them to a bulldog rescue on the East coast and then I donated one to my local rescue and they're just going to put it in a gift um, basket to, as a, a raffle. And you use them on like an elevated um, platform? I, for mine, I just put it on the floor, but my dogs are a lot shorter than yours. So they didn't have a problem. I was thinking of um, asking, cause th- since they're round, I was thinking of finding a way to either build some type of raised platform to oh my to, god to you know set what? these into you know what would work hmm. okay so think about the wrought iron but not like expensive wrought iron the, mm-hmm. the wrought iron three-legged plant stand yes exactly and yes you just need to take the tray with you so that you yes get the right fit. that's that, that is exactly what would work that is ex- that's perfect i'm actually going to start looking around because right now with the weather, um, they should probably have some of those on clearance in different places. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I can get a few to give them a try and see what it looks like. Cause it doesn't need to be, it doesn't be need to be very high off the ground. Just no, I have some inches. that are not high at all. Mm-hmm. On yeah. The- I mean, cause if I can get one that's like maybe, um, three to five inches off the ground, that would be perfect. That's all you need. Yeah. And it's, but it's just like, it, it's a, it's a really easy thing to do. And, you know, I think that, you know, I, I don't doubt that the mind pet platter works for a lot of dogs. It just didn't work for my dogs. And the um, person who created it, she kept mentioning on her website, she mentions this research. There's this research that proves that this is how dogs should eat, but she doesn't link to the research. And I asked her a few times, Hey, can you send me a link to the research? And she would respond to my emails, but just completely not respond to my request for, she would just say something completely different and not give me any links. And I was so disappointed because I was really interested in reading why, um, like who did this research, what made them come up with the idea to do this research and what did they come up, you know, what did they come up with? What type of dogs were tested or, you know, were studied. And I, I had so many questions, but unfortunately, um, I couldn't find anything. And I reached out like on different social media platforms to see if anyone else had seen any type of research and no one, no one could find anything. So it's like, oh, well, but I still think it's a good idea. And my dogs do really well. It holds liquids just fine. And there's what, five little sections that you can put stuff in. So I could put an egg in one section and the, you know, food in one section and all. Yeah, it's really nice. Hey, that sounds um impressive yeah well and I think that like again going back to the economy a lot of us have to start thinking outside the box it's you know you know I mean it you know I was really disappointed that I spent forty dollars on four and not forty dollars on four but forty dollars times four for these mine pet platters and they didn't work for my dogs that's a lot of money to, to spend, you know, it's $160 plus shipping and tax, you know, on these platters only to have them not work, you know, and for people who just simply look at that price tag and they're like, I'm not paying for this. Um, I paid for it because I was planning on doing a review. So it became, you know, a business write-off, but for the average pet parent, if you can't afford $40 for a dish that may or may not work for your dogs, but you do want to do something similar, here's a way to do something for a fraction of the price. So that was, that was fun to figure out. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah. Keep, keep us posted on that. 
Thanks for the idea of the planters, because that is brilliant. I'm going to bring that up to Johan, because I think that that, that is exactly what we need. Uh, sure. I, and you know, don't, don't worry. I, I won't send you a bill. <laughs> but when we're on Shark Tank next year. Well, let's just say even before that, when you win the lottery, <laughs> I don't want to move to Maryville. You just send my money. this. Way. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Um, well, that's kind of like all I got. That's all you I got too. You, well, then say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> right, to live.